Alex Tarao is no stranger to all South Africans, having made his television appearance on The Tastemaster. We soon got intrigued by his charms and colourful personality. Today we chat to Alex on how he's been keeping busy during the national lockdown, as well as giving back to his community. Welcome, Alex. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to finally meet you. I was glued to my television throughout the season of Tastemaster. But how have you been keeping busy post-Tastemaster and during the lockdown? So post-Tastemaster uh, has been absolutely amazing. We were really busy as a business. But then obviously the lockdown came in and we had to, to shut down everything. So including my new acquired uh, restaurant in a, in a really buzzing area in Joburg. But uh, unfortunately, I haven't opened it yet. It's, it's waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that everyone is also waiting for you guys to open. But why not? Do you not do takeaways? Are you not seen as an essential service? So how have you then just been able to keep busy during the time? So during this time, you know, everyone's doing the takeaways and all of that. So I went one further and I didn't want to type of compete with other guys. So we opened an online a grocery store and we essentially sell um, the restaurant uh, quality goods to our customers. Otherwise, we've been doing a lot of maintenance, a lot of work around our restaurant, around our food trucks, around our catering equipment, trying to keep busy and trying to keep obviously our employees uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, basically earning something at this stage because it's been really, really difficult. Mm. Thank you for doing that, though, because as you keep employing people, you're feeding so many more families. And, you know, continuing on the vein of people just falling in love with you, South Africa fell in love with you, and your charisma and your flamboyant ways when you cook, when you debuted on The Tastemaster. And you also made it one, to one of the top three contestants. So what was the experience like for you? And what did you most valuably take from it so from the taste master experience it, it, it was absolutely it was a great show it was a local show which is even better <laughs> um, and what I took away from it is that um, coming third was great coming first obviously it wasn't meant for me it was <laughs> for to me um, but no I met great people great friends and at the end of the day I love that South Africa and a production made in South Africa showcased our talents, mm. our backgrounds, and the produce we currently have available. It, it was great to see a great mix of people from chefs to foodies to home cooks all come into one place and battle it out. So, yeah, it was absolutely great. What a cool experience. I think we learn leaps and bounds when we put in a pressure cooker. No pun intended there. And that pressure cooker seemed to have truly made some gems out of that competition. And local is lekker, right? So we support all things South African. Oh, in which way, though, did this business and your business model change? You've already spoken about pushing the grocery store and you've already spoken about pushing the food truck. So how else have you been able to go above and beyond with this business model? So due to the COVID type of situation, um, we had to innovate quite quickly and rapidly and adapt to ever-changing uh, markets and industry. We already own a catering business, uh, um, a food truck business and a restaurant business. And we had to innovate all three of those into one. So it, it has been really tough, but you have to reinvent yourself every single day. Yeah, you seem like such a leader with a clear mind, clarity of thought. So what advice do you have for other restaurateurs and entrepreneurs, specifically in the food industry during this time? Obviously, not everyone can hop on the bandwagon and adopt the same model that you have going on. But what kind words of encouragement do you have and advice? Look, um, advice, uh, uh, I, I don't think I'm in a position to give advice because I don't know what I'm doing is go is right. Mm. I'll only know in a few months' time <laughs> if my company's still alive. But what I can say is try everything. Try every avenue you can. If, if something works, even if it's just only works for a month, do that, try and make something happen with that. And then if you need to readapt it, adapt again and adapt again. Eventually things will even out and they will get better. But you have to keep on trying with every single avenue as you can. Yeah, we see creativity and flexibility here coming key play. And you recently started a feeding initiative making 2,500 meals a day a week. And that's quite a large number of meals. So how are you able to do all of this work? 
So essentially what we're doing is we are using our restaurant as the base type of kitchen as well as our food trucks to create meals for orphans around the country. So we've st- uh, basically chosen schools um, mm. around Joburg. And we support every week with a drop-off every second day of supplies, of which they can make their own foods. Um, yeah, it's been it's been such a cool thing to, to get involved with. We've had so many people come on board and donate and assist us on a private level, on a corporate level. We've had uh, like um, uh, uh, like uh, juice companies, we've had fruit and veg companies, we've had meat suppliers all jump on board to assist us with what we're currently doing. So our aim is 2,500 meals a week, which are, we are right on target. And Eat Out has also been absolutely amazing, which have assisted us with um, a fund to keep this going. So we can obviously employ our staff, pay our staff, buy the supplies that we need and obviously take those supplies and feed the schools and kids. So yeah, it's absolutely, it's been heartwarming, heartbreaking, emotional. Um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been amazing. If you can give back, please do so. It's, it's, it, it makes you feel good, but not just about making you feel good. If you're doing something for a good cause, also make sure it's not a once off, something that is sustainable and that you can keep on doing it. So I've made it part of our company now uh, once things do get better, that, that we, we can support these schools that we've been supporting over the past two and a half weeks now uh, um, on a regular. I don't want to do like a once-off. A once-off doesn't work and doesn't really make any, any. It doesn't really help anyone. So it's more like a long-term view. It seems like it needing to be a long-term plan. You need as many people on deck and on board as possible. So how can the public be able to get involved? So how can people get involved? All they have to do is go onto our site or follow us on Instagram at 88s.com if you go onto our site or at 88s Food on Instagram or Facebook. And essentially, they can just send us a message, say, hey, I want to get involved. I want to give you either food or either money, whichever. We were going to use that to pass it forward to those who need. And mm-hmm. in that uh, process, we produce content so people will see exactly what we're doing oh wow i love that little angle as well so you can see exactly where your food and your work and your hard-earned money is going to of course for the public and everyone right now who is moved by alex's movement head over to afternoon express's website and we will have the details as to how you can contribute thank you so much alex we really appreciate your time with us and giving back in the way you have Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Bye, Alex. Alex is a true hero for being proactive during this difficult time. Not only has he been innovative in keeping his business alive and keeping staff employed, but he's also giving back to his community in a big way. We thank you so much, Alex, for the awesome person you are and the amazing work that you do. Guys um, are doing a great job. And, yeah, again, thank you for having me. (laughs) Thank you, Alex. Bye.